Maker, it's Charlotte with Makesy. Joanna with the Soap Gal. Makesy is super excited to have partnered with Joanna at the Soap Gal to help makers learn how to make cold process soap in a way that is safe and scalable so that you can be successful with your business. So today, Joanna and I are going to be making a very special formula, one that has sold tens of millions of bars for Joanna at the Soap Gal. And we're gonna teach you a little bit about how to make cold process soap yourself using our innovative formula and make a bar of soap that will be safe to use in 48 hours. So Joanna's gonna walk us through and I'm gonna be her assistant today. So Joanna, you take the reins. <laughs> right. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna be using our Trinity Blend, which our Trinity Blend is the perfect balance of oils. It is made with coconut oil, which is so cleansing, and olive oil, which is so moisturizing, and palm to give us that hard bark, but responsibly sourced palm, of course. <laughs> and um, the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna have Charlotte, we're gonna be using they're wonderful. Can you explain this? This is our nine liter melter, and this melter is perfect for candle makers, soap makers, bath and body makers. Um, if you don't have a melter, once you get one, you'll realize it is a complete game changer because it allows you to do what we said, scale. Yes. If you're using a pouring pitcher, you're going to be limited to making a few products at a time. So it's great for your first few batches or for putting smaller items in, like when you're mixing certain fragrances or a different enhancer but for your master batch yes you want to invest in a melter so what a master batch is is when let's say you're going to be making four loaves of soap today you're able to batch out all the oils that you need for those four loaves or you could just purchase the Trinity blend put it into your melter allow it to um, melt and you have oil on tap <laughs> so the first thing we're gonna do is tear out our scale and then we are going to weigh out three pounds of our Trinity blend. Scan heavy. Yes. <laughs> but this is so much faster than when you're trying to scoop out the coconut and all your oils. And this is definitely a tried and true recipe. All right, ma'am, here you go. Okay, so we got our oils. We're gonna just give it a quick stir. I think this is just us soapers. We just like to make sure everything's mixed. <laughs> nope, I get it. I'm the same way. <laughs> and we're gonna pour out three pounds of our base. We're almost there. Oh, you got it, girl. <laughs> it's like I've done this before or something. <laughs> I mean, you can not get, voila, look at that little bit left. All right, so we're gonna move that to the side. So now that we have our oils in place, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add in our water. I know, that's weird. Um, <laughs> because we're using a 50-50 lye solution, which what 50-50 is, it's a time saver. Um, I know that I have the bare minimum of equal parts, so I can't add any more lye or it's going to be lye heavy. So I have a 50-50 solution here, but I know that if I do that, I'm going to have soap on a stick because it's going to go to trace really fast. I need extra liquid. So the extra, extra liquid that we're using for this formula, for this recipe, is just distilled water. And we're going to be using eight ounces of distilled water. How did I come up with that? Easily, because I know I have 50% lye, 50% water, but I need to make sure that I incorporate the water that's already in here to dissolve that lie so i know that for my lie i need 14 ounces i think approximately is, really, yep. is right here because i do have a little bit of a lie discount there um or super fat so i know that i need to have the water and then i do have a little bit of a water discount in there as well so then that way you have the perfect timing and the perfect bar of soap so we're going to add in our pink first. Yep, we're making a really pretty bar of soap, which we promise we will show you guys afterwards. This won't be one of those really unsatisfying tutorials where you don't get to see the finished product. We will show you. And then I'm also <laughs> going to be adding in my water. And I do know that this is a safe traced um, fragrance. So I'm adding my fragrance in too. So I'm putting everything in one pot. 
and Joanna has tested this fragrance yes. already, but oh, it also, so good. yeah, it smells really good. <laughs> this yes. is one of my favorites. Joanna, you had some advice for people on ensuring that they test fragrance before they go make a whole big batch of soap. Yes, every time I get a fragrance in, I always do a small test batch. So then that way I know, is it safe to put in the fragrance before, or do I have to put it in after, or do I have to whisk it? How is that fragrance going to react with my soap? And this is a nice fragrance, so we yes. can go ahead and throw it on in. Yes, so I have all my ingredients all incorporated in one batch. Another little trick that I love to do is I love to take a pitcher and have some water in it. So then that way I have a place to put my emulsion blender in through the process and it's gonna be able to stay clean. Whenever I use anything, I just stick it in that water. And then that way I'm able to have a nice clean environment. We're gonna take that emulsion blender and we're gonna start blending. <laughs> Okay, now that I'm blending this, I'm going to pull a little bit of oil to the side so that way I can mix that with my um, charcoal. So I'm just going to pull a little, I'll be pouring this right back in. I just want to make sure that it's all incorporated. So I'm going to just take the spoon and kind of whisk it. Oh, charcoal is always a black mess. Charcoal is just always, it's inevitably everywhere. Okay. <laughs> but we'll keep it as clean as we can. <laughs> yes. So now I'm going to mix this again. Okay, so now we're gonna add in our 50-50 lye solution. Nice and slow, pour it in. Another trick that I like to do is I like to have a timer. So then I know at every time how long it's gonna take for this to go to trace. So now we're mixing both parts together. We're making soap, the oils are saponifying, so we're just gonna be stirring. This takes a little while. <laughs> I can feel it being thicker. See? 30 second trace. Time's up. Yep. <laughs> so that's another thing that's nice to have. So we're at a very nice light trace. We're gonna bring this over. Now we're gonna pour some of this into this. So now I've got my black portion. We're gonna mix that up just a little tiny bit. So now that's at a thicker trace. Yep. And so now this you guys is, should be able to see it's happening in so, front of your eyes. So now this is what an in the pot swirl is. You just pour one color into the other color, and then you pour it into the mold. Back and forth to get all the variation of the colors. And it smells super, super good. And then we got to clean our as much soap batter out as possible. Every last drop. Yep. <laughs> and this is making a beautiful soap. So just to recap, you guys, we started out with our Trinity blend. We got three pounds of the Trinity blend. Okay, then we added in our water, our fragrance oil, and our rose clay. Separately, we mixed in our activated charcoal, and then we emulsified in our 50-50 water lye solution. And that is how we got here. Yes. Now, Super easy. Now it's time to texture the top. Okay, so this is the fun creative part. <laughs> yes, so we're going to kind of just spoon over onto one side. And what you're doing is you're taking your spoon, you're going halfway into the other and go up and just spoon the texture over to one side. And then after you do that, back in the water, and then you have fun with your botanicals. And we're just gonna sprinkle some onto the side. Gorgeous. As far as enhancers go, obviously yes. today we chose some beautiful 
colors here, but you can utilize other mica powders. You can utilize different botanicals. Yeah. And like Joanna said, um, you can utilize many different fragrance oils or essential oils, but do a test batch first to ensure that you're gonna be making a bar of soap yes. without any hiccups along right. the way. So now the last step that we need to do is we need to take the lid and we need to put this baby to bed for 48 hours. Good night. Good night. <laughs> and then we'll be back to cut the bar. See you guys soon. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's unmold and unbox this beautiful soap. Wow. Okay, so that turned out beautifully. <laughs> Now we are going, so at the bottom of this mold, there's these little dots. We're gonna push it to the side and just pop it out. So just push it through. There you go. Yep, now we have that. So now the next step is you're gonna need to allow it to breathe. So you're gonna take this, you're gonna kinda just push the sides, get all the edges in place. Now you're gonna pull it to its side and then it's just gonna pop right out. Easy peasy. And if you have a friend to help you, it yes. makes it even easier. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So now that the soap is out this of its out of mold, way. we are going to use this as a guideline and we're just going to kind of cut the bars. So we're going to go through, see where it is and kind of score where, where we want our cuts to be. So the really cool thing if you buy this soap box from the Mixie website is we have little engraved marks so that you can consistently cut your bar of soap each time. So if you're using a crinkle cutter or you're cutting it by hand like Joanna is now, it makes it a little bit easier on you to have consistency so that each finished bar of soap will weigh approximately the same amount. And if you want to check too, you got a little scale nearby. And you guys can see how pretty the swirls are. So this was a technique that Joanna used in the beginning of the video um, to pour the black activated charcoal and the rose clay together to make these really beautiful swirls. Yep, and actually we got a little bit of glycerin rivers going on. <laughs> so right there shows that it's real soap. Um, I think that so many people kind of have issues with glycerin. I personally think it's beautiful because that's the byproduct of soap. And but. if you use a crinkle cutter too, yeah. you can also see the beautiful look that you'll get with that. With so the cut. So we're just gonna kinda go through and just cut the bars. Um, another thing that's nice, if you want, you can always put a ruler on the side too and then measure that direction as well. Yep. But now that we have cut some bars, let's weigh some bars. So okay. with these bars, because they're all different sizes, I would probably suggest to put them on the pan the same direction every single time so you can weigh. Fluid ounces, 4.72. So, so then you would just take this one, this would be bar one, and then weigh that one out, it's three and a half, and that would be bar two. So then you know, that way you can keep track of your weight so you would know when the cure time is with a discount of water. And if you haven't yet, check out our other video on do my soaps need to cure? So you can get a little bit more information on cure time and why this specific formula that we're using is so innovative and allows you to make more soap, be more scalable, and to not have to wait four to six weeks before you can cut into your bar of soap. So now package it. Let's package them up. So you can use organza bags and put in a bar and then you know, close it up and put a ribbon here or do a cigar ban. Another way that you could, um, what's so great about these is you can actually use the soap in the bag itself yep. and then hang it up and it could dry. Um, that's really nice in between We uses. love those sisal bags yes. too. These are really cool because they actually are a gentle exfoliant for your skin as well. So this is another bag where the bar of soap can actually be used while it's still inside and that's actually the best way to use it. So that's another way you could package. I love these bags, especially at Christmas time. If you made charcoal soap with some tea tree, you know, clean up your act. Um, <laughs> and so you can have Christmas coal soap, and then you got like your little Santa bag. Yeah, it's very <laughs> so, cute. Yeah, it's fun at Christmas. And these are some of Joanna's yeah. beautiful soaps that yes. she's made. So you can see she has this really cute label here. Joanna, any advice for customers um, in making their label and what you should and should not have on the label? I'd say keep it simple. You don't want to put out any claims. Soap is a wash off product. 
just say it's tea tree. Don't say tea tree is antifungal and all that because now you're making claims and you're going to make that into a cosmetic. Soap, it's not a cosmetic. It is a wash off product and you want to be able to sell it as a wash off product. Yep, so Joanna's labels are beautiful, simply sophisticated. You've got your brand name, you've got the size of the soap, and a little bit of information on what the ingredients are. So, um, and I have a lock code. <laughs> that's because Joanna yes. is a good manufacturing <laughs> practice <laughs> but, certified. So, but that's, all those are goals. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you guys for following along. You learned how to follow our formula today, and we'll drop the exact formula in the description below. So, if you want to follow along, you can make this exact bar of soap, and you can see. Cold process soap making maybe isn't as difficult as you thought and if you follow along with these instructions you'll find it's probably a little bit more like making a cake with a cake mix yes. than uh, trying to make one from scratch. Yes. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching and be sure to subscribe to our channel to stay in the know on all the latest makers tips and tricks. Now no, go, go make, make it happen! happen.